Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to today's video. We're going to be folding mask 17. Tools required to fold this design is a sheet of paper, of course, a notebook with a flat, smooth surface to do the embossing on. You'll also need an empty ballpoint pen or an embossing stylus if you have one. A pair of scissors and a bunch of binder clamps. Firstly, we're going to start by just cutting around the edges just to cut out the design. And then we're going to get into the embossing and the pre-creasing and then we're going to begin folding. I've included timestamps in the video description if you want to skip past the embossing and pre-creasing phase and get straight into the folding. This design will be using cans and French card. It's 160 GSM grams per square meter. Um, and the reason we're using this is imagine if you creating a clay sculpture and it's a portrait and you're doing the details but your clay is just a little bit too wet. It's going to be hard to get the fine details if it's uh, too wet, but also if it's too dry. Um, in paper terms, that would be referring to too floppy or too, um, too thick. So for this specific design, I found 160 grams is the perfect thickness. And the French card has a nice fiber length that allows the paper to hold shape. So it's not too plasticky or not too springy. It's kind of like, yeah, just perfect. So when you cut the crease pattern out, put it on a notebook or something that is has a nice flat surface. And um, I'll say a magazine or but if you use a magazine, you want to use the back side of the magazine because it does leave uh, marks from doing the embossing. And then using an embossing stylus or an empty ballpoint pen, go over and push quite firmly, but not so firmly so it penetrates the paper. and then continue going over all of the crease lines you want to take your time when you do the embossing and don't worry about if you're not sure if it's hard enough or soft enough you'll notice when you're doing the pre-creasing and then you can just recalibrate yourself to the next time you do mask folding If you want to get an embossing stylus like I'm using here in the video, I've included a link in the video description. I think this one cost me about maybe $12 or so. Just got it off eBay. So this style of mask folding is slightly different from regular origami as we are using both straight lines and curved lines. And I developed this method of creating a crease pattern digitally based off an improvisation that helps us to be able to recreate the design without any excess crease marks or any excess lines. It's one of those things that's only possible now that we have technology that previous generations didn't have. So it's quite incredible the opportunity that we have currently to further the origami art form and to 
kind of the more tools you have, the more you can create freely, the more your creativity and your imagination can express itself without any limits. And um, yeah, that's where we are currently and it's, I'm blown away. I am a kid in a playground. So just continue embossing. You might want to make extra sure when you're going around the lips and the nose section to follow the lines. As the more detailed areas, it's it can be can be good to get the lines perfect in the beginning. It just makes it's the foundation for the model. So you want to have it as good as possible in the beginning. It just makes it so much easier further along the line. Pun not intended. This is mask 17 we're folding. Structurally it's the same mouth and the same nose as a few of my previous designs. When you get familiar with a design, with uh, one of my mask designs, what you can do is you can adjust the finished model and change it around sometimes redoing parts and then convert that improvisation into a new crease pattern. And then later on the line you can take that new crease pattern and improvise with the finished design creating another crease pattern. And you'll get these uh, tree branches off the off a single design in the beginning and it's like a plant that grows and just spreads its branches and it's never ending literally and I can take apart on the computer I can take uh, the mouth and the nose and mix it together with uh, let's say a hat from mask 343 and then I fold it up and I have a new crease pattern just like that loads of fun So just continue embossing, taking your time. If you've had a stressful day, just maybe try and relax. Don't worry about it. All that stress will be there later on. But now we can just focus on folding paper and having a good time. We got some jazz playing in the background. I love listening to jazz music. I remember I watched a 10 hour documentary on jazz. And ever since then I was just so inspired because it's, it's really like the collective voice of humanity expressing itself and other creatives and other pioneers of the art form is really where I draw my most of my inspiration from. I think the human spirit is literally unstoppable and when we can trust in ourselves and believe in ourselves, I mean it's not the sky that's the limit, it's beyond that. We can literally do anything. Uh, what are the odds, I mean, of being born at this time? It's quite incredible apart from the politics and all of that but I wouldn't worry too much about that I have a feeling that the world is gonna be changing for the better and I mean it should we have so much advanced technology we should be prioritizing just making freeing ourselves so we can spend time with loved ones spend time doing what we love to do following our passions having a good time sharing good vibes with each other, you know, just on an everyday basis. I'd like that. The embossing style as I'm using has little bumps on the end, which really helps as it stops my fingers from moving forward. 
a hack to this if you're using a ballpoint pen is to take some tape maybe some duct tape or something just a bit stronger that will stick and um, tape around the end but really the tools and the paper and all of that that's just like it's not really important the most important thing is you know just having a good time folding exploring what's possible with paper so it's really not important to create something that's perfect something that's an exact copy of how I'm folding it you know faces are I mean think of how many people there are in the world I think there's like 7 billion or more and everybody looks different so there's no right or wrong way when it comes to folding masks it's more about what do you want to portray in the design what do you want it to express and uh, maybe that's just a bit harmonious a bit minimalistic like I like to have it or maybe that's just a bit wild and crazy that's really all up to you So slowly, slowly continuing. Check if we've missed any places. Turn the paper over. It's quite nice to look at the back side. And then we just compare the left side and the right side to see that they look identical. I probably missed somewhere, but it'll show up when we start doing the pre-creasing and then you just put the piece of paper of course back on the notebook and emboss it so when we're doing the pre-creasing you want to use the you start with the, the bigger lines and maybe the mountain folds first I often do the mountain folds and use the soft parts of your fingers you don't want to be using the nails and you also don't want to be folding the paper all the way back you want to keep it at an angle you be breaking the fibers in the paper so the paper knows how to be folded And it's easiest just to start with the bigger straight lines and then once we've done those we work our way to the smaller lines and the curved lines and just slowly using the soft cushions of our fingers to slowly condition the paper. so if it's a small fold and the whole paper is folded in the wrong direction you can um, open it up and gently fold the whole sheet in alignment with that small fold before you pre-crease it just like this we can open a whole paper up change the direction like that and then pre-crease the little fold slowly slowly I'll often find I really want to rush this part and just get to the folding but then I have to remind myself like no man just take take your time and it'll be so much more enjoyable folding it yeah I missed the point here yeah. 20 emboss that again like that there that's much better nice slowly slowly
Just like that. Slowly, slowly. And really, the whole surface of the paper is flat, as you know. And when we are pre-creasing, we are cracking it, but the paper has a certain tension. So you want to be aware of the tension in the entire sheet while you're pre-creasing. So you don't force the paper. And also, just to be in the mindset of not forcing really helps folding as intuitively you'll get a feeling for there's one place that would work better than the other and um, I would say listen to that intuition and fold that line rather than the other line and just slowly work your way through because more often than not your intuition knows better than um, our logical mind knows and it's about just trusting that and working together with the paper slowly but surely folding and folding Now we're working our way around the chin here. Still working on the mountain folds. Remember to be aware of the tension in the entire sheet while you're pre-creasing and working with the tension rather than against it. If you have two thumbs and you feel that this is maybe a bit tricky, two thumbs meaning that you're a bit clumsy with your hands, you can always start with an easier design like Mask 3, perhaps Mask 9 is also a bit easier, Mask 4. Mask 3 is a favorite, so a lot of people are following that design. I think there's a couple of hundred people now that I folded it. Slowly, slowly. See, now we have all the main lines folded. Now we can work our way to the small lines, the small pre-crease the smaller ones by the sunglasses here so when you're done with a lot of the mountain folds you can go over to the valley folds and you can look at the paper on the printed side and then where you see where one fold is then you can work out where the equivalent is on the other side as the design is an exact reflection. I've probably folded this design about five, six, seven, eight times. So I'm pretty well aware of where all the valley folds are and all the mountain folds are but if you're unsure you can always turn the paper over take a look and then turn it back over you can always obviously do the pre-creasing of the valley folds having the paper the other way around I just find it easier to pre-crease folding down, having the line in the mountain fold rather than the other way around. 
this keeps the section that I'm pre-creasing closer to my eyes without the rest of the paper coming in the way so I can more clearly articulate the fold just small habits one picks up after doing this a while But really just follow your intuition, listen to the paper and do it in a way that works for you. Works together with the paper. There's really no right or wrong way. The goal of this is just conditioning the paper. So as long as you doing that, then you're doing it right. Now I see I've missed a few of the small ones. So I'm just going over the design, looking for all those small lines that still need a bit of folding just slowly slowly working through the design if you have any questions Don't be shy, just drop them in the comment section. Most often, if you're wondering something, there's probably someone else wondering it as well. So it really does help. If you're wondering it, just drop it in the comment. This really adds value to the incredible mask folding community. Where we share ideas, we share thoughts, we share things we're wondering and pondering on. This helps push the art form forward. It's really as I see it, we're still in the early stages. But it's uh, it's going forward quite fast, I must say. Now with uh, Ewell Cooper's incredible tessellation designs built off the hexagonal tessellation grid as well as Timu, who's a young 17 year old Russian guy that's started folding tessellation masks and he's really, he's pushing it. I love seeing new artists who come up and just create, use paper as a form of expression. and just push the limits and see what's possible there's something, I'm not quite sure what it is but there's something about origami that just speaks to all of us it's this notion of transformation of this uh, dimensional shift from two dimensions to three dimensions I think uh, innately we all multi-dimensional beings and it resonates this idea of taping, taking something and transforming it into a closer reflection of ourselves. I mean, you could say that you expressing yourself, you taking part of yourself and expressing, you pushing it outwards into the paper, infusing it with life. Or you could say that you transforming the external world that starts off as a square into something that's more in alignment with 
uh, feeling that you have inside yourself and channeling that over I would say it's also like, I mean, you only have so much space in your head. You know, you don't want to be carrying around all these amazing ideas and all these, I mean, you could say life goals or plans or inspired moments in life without grounding them and mani manifesting them into the physical world by taking action. It's so important. This opens up space in our head for new thoughts and new ideas and inspiration to to grow and come into. I would love to see it all day, every day and just fold paper. I think paper folding is, yeah, it's my happy place. Any worries or any stress, I just... I mean, when I hear that sound of paper, it just puts me in the mode, gets me in flow state. There we go. Now we have completed the pre-creasing. We look at the included folding guide from the PDF. You see I've outlined one, two, three, four, five, starting at the mouth and the nose section. The reasoning behind this is the nose is the part of the face that is in the center as well as extrudes out of the design the most. So when we lock these into place, it makes it so much easier. Start with the mouth and just get the, the main crease of the mouth into place. And then the next section is the upper lip and between the upper lip and the nose. This is for this structure of mouth and nose. This is the way to start it. As you can see, I'm folding certain parts like here below. Lock it into place with a binder clamp. There we go. Now we can pop the top lip into place. and work on all the crease lines that come out of the lips starting with the left side without forcing just slowly popping the paper into place there we go we have the top lip you can see the nose is coming into shape a little bit between the upper lip and the and the nose. Now we can work on the right side. You don't want to rush this part as we want to maintain the paper's integrity without creating excess creases. So just listen to your intuition and look for those parts that want to be popped into place. If you turn the paper over, this can also help. Just slowly forming the nose and the mouth. There we go like that now we can lock in the left side with a binder clamp just on the outside like that 
Now work our way over to the right and do the same on the right side. You can see I'm not forcing the paper, I'm working with the paper, maintaining its integrity. And just gently bringing it all into shape. Now that we've done the lower section, points 1, 3, 2, 4, 5. We can start working on point six, which is between the sunglasses. We can pop the center section outwards, giving the paper a nice arc, and then work on getting the small creases above the sunglasses into shape without forcing the paper knows where it wants to be folded If we work on the section of the sunglasses that meets the, the center point of the sunglasses, like that, this will help bring the design together. Doing the insides, a little bit in one place. A little bit on the other side. Okay, now we can move over to the sides of the sunglasses. Pop that into there, like that. You notice that the center point is still not quite fully formed. That's okay. We're just uh, conditioning the paper into the right folds slowly but surely. And then when we've worked our way all around the design, we'll come back over and get it into final position. Oh, I like this song. Nice and upbeat. We work our way up. Notice that this section is double paper that we're folding. Oh, I think I got a little bit out of the camera there. There you go. That section. So it's a bit thicker to fold. But all good. Might be a bit trickier if you're folding with, let's say, 200 grams paper. But anything 160 or thinner, not a problem. So now we're working on the right side, doing what we did on the left side.
just lock that into place with a binder clamp. Because we're not forcing the paper and it still holds its integrity, this allows the whole design to come together quite easily. This is the section I was referring to that is double, on, double paper on the other side. I seem to find that it's easier for me to work with the folded area being on the left side of the paper. So I've rotated the design 180 degrees. So I am still folding on the left, but the paper has been rotated. You're just looking for those areas that you feel can be folded without forcing the paper and working on those areas first. There we go. Just like that. You can lock it into place. might look a little bit wild and crazy but it always looks this way in the beginning until we go over a second time and get it all into shape you might better want to be a little bit wary of the top and make sure that there's no extra tension there so the paper doesn't tear at the top there we go working on the chin to remove a few of the clamps following the crease lines and then clamp it back together. You can see how the design is slowly taking shape. This allows us to now add the shaping lines. Just get the mouth more into position. There we go. Then we can start adding the shape to the cheek and the chin. Pushing the sunglasses back in shape so they don't pop out too much. We'll work over here a little bit. And then maybe clamp it up. This is just hiding the paper behind to create the illusion that the sunglasses stick out freely from the face and then we can lock them in shape. There we go. And repeating on the right side.
add a little bit of the cheek and the chin on the right. Bringing it all a little bit more into shape. Want to bring the mouth at the back down a bit, a little bit on the cheekbone, and then maybe we work our way up to the top, like this. And just slide it like that. Remove the clamps, maybe add a little bit of shaping on the top, just to keep it in shape. Now that the main structure is all in place, we can start working on the smaller details, like the outside of the sunglasses, the inside, just defining the folds a little bit more. Notice how the top is pushed inwards for the shaping adding a few vertical lines and shaping the nose to give it a little bit more character and personality I have one finger behind and I'm pushing on top giving me more control of the folding process and now continuing with the sunglasses slowly slowly just bringing it all together you can see the outside of the sunglasses there's a, a small crease using my nail to shape it like that and now just working around again and again a little bit here and a little bit there adding a bit of three dimensionality we can lock in the back hold it all together with a binder clamp Helping us add in the final shaping around the design. And really you can spend a lot of time here just adding the kind of shaping that you want to make it personalized. Some people like to make the designs a bit more narrow, a bit more rounded. You can look at pictures of portraits. I like to Google clay sculptures and look at them or anatomy just to see like where the cheekbones are for inspiration. And just do it in the way that you feel you want to do it. Yeah, I like this. Now it's really coming into shape. It's quite a nice design. It really shows the endless possibilities of mask folding, of utilizing this technique of embossing and pre-creasing to create 
sculptural 3D origami masks that can have sunglasses on. I mean, how cool is that? I'm just pulling the sunglasses in a little bit. Defining the creases around them and under them to hold them in shape. And now using an embossing stylus, we can go over and add some final touches. Getting everything just to look the way we want it to look. Just right. Just like that. There we go. So this has been folding mask 17 of my mask series. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have definitely enjoyed folding this one. You can add a sheet of color if you like with a spray paint or with acrylics. Spray paint adds a little bit more strength to keep the design in shape over time and I will see you next Tuesday with mask 18 thanks for watching gotta get creative before we get old grab yourself some paper let's paper fold